actually, of a flower arrangement which I've called, whimsically enough, Secretary Week. It's a, it's a composition that I began on another program, part one, and this is part two as the conclusion. And it is taking a, uh, a very, very nice, pretty, conventional flower arrangement and trying to make a very pretty, conventional flower painting out of it. And um, having begun at the top, working our way down. I'm now, it looks also as, uh, as though it were complete, but it actually is not complete. It is not just the beginning, but it certainly is well on the way to being complete. And um, by applying, by, by working from the top to the bottom, uh, it is a way of solving the problem of the uh, enormous confusion that takes place when you look at a flower arrangement. You have to do it unit by unit. Uh, it can't be done uh, with any uh, um, uh, general plan. It has to, yeah, the plan has to be that you uh, paint what you see as you go, go along each petal individually. Um, the uh, the business of, of of doing flower paintings means that uh, you have to uh, understand that each petal has got its purpose. Not that you have to be a slave to that um, to that and make it look like a seed catalog, but it certainly means that you have to interpret it and and decipher what you're seeing and be faithful to the um, to the rendering. Uh, such as when a daisy has got pink in the center, uh, you jolly well put it in there. So. Uh, having talked uh, a great deal about flower painting and uh, hoping that I don't repeat myself too much, uh, go into the uh, other uses of flowers in design. It's everywhere. Uh, flowers have been the inspiration for design since, well, I guess since uh, probably the caveman first looked at a little wild flower and deci decided that it was pretty nice to have that right outside there. And um, it, the, the flowers are the basis of most design uh, anywhere. If you, anywhere from the metro in Paris, France, which is based on uh, the, the, the design of flowers, to the um, and to the entire uh, Renaissance uh, design of the columns and the porticos and all of the fancy um, uh, interpretations of, of design of any kind is traceable to flowers. Uh, fashion, of course, is traceable to flowers. Most, uh, most fabrics, uh, uh, with the exception possibly of, um, of uh, plaids and uh, and checks and stripes, uh, uh, textile design is based on the uh, investigation and study of flowers. Uh, carpets, rugs of the finest quality, uh, the design is more than most usually um, a, um, a design of flowers underfoot, probably for the need for people to feel as though they are walking through meadows of flowers. Um, uh, most, uh, m most toys, uh, with the exception possibly of automobiles, um, uh, children's, uh, children's dolls uh, have the introduction of flowered fabrics uh, pr pretty much all the time. And the, uh, the decor of a house uh, depends enormously on flowers and floral designs. Uh, the design of the fleur-de-lis, which was the Louis, uh, the choice of uh, the um, symbol of the Louis regimes in France in the, um, in the 18th, uh, uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th century, was the fleur-de-lis, which is based on the iris. Uh, I'm sure that uh, everybody is aware of that. And the um, and the Egyptian temples are just one continuous study of flowers, namely the lotus and the um, and the river flowers and the uh, the um, uh, daisy. So uh, the history of flowers in design is with us everywhere. The um, 
the desire to paint flowers has been uh, existing ever since uh, painting began as a uh, as a human endeavor and a human activity and so uh, the um, it is not just the business of, uh, of doing art but it's also a commercial um, uh, viable uh, part of the world in which uh, were it not for flowers and flower designs I'm not quite sure of where the uh, the general the general uh, population would be would go how it would dress and how it would uh, also how it would surround itself I am sure that anybody watching this program is sitting on a sofa that possibly has a flower design on it and if it's not the sofa then it's the chair and if it's not the chair then it's the curtains and so it, it's with us everywhere and it's what uh, probably is uh, makes uh, makes um, a life. Uh, I mean, just about any uh, occasion that you can think of, not just Secretary's Week, but every birth and every death uh, and every celebration involves the use of flowers. So. Uh, as, as, I, as I say, it is a, uh, it is a uh, m maybe more important part of the human existence than people are uh, entirely aware of. And uh, maybe I'm, I'm the little messenger that, uh, the, that the use of flowers is a, is a vital uh, part of the art world as well as just general daily living. Um, I find that uh, uh, that uh, the um, the painting of flowers has not been attended to very carefully in the p public television. I mean, in the television programming, because uh, well, it's 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 a very specialized thing, and you have to sort of be a, a little bit um, overly confident to sit and paint flowers uh, for a long period of time and expect people's interest to remain there. Uh, that's the chance that I have to take that the interest uh, in what I'm doing is going to uh, remain sparkling for a very long period of time. To spend an hour at anything seems to be more than the average human being can uh, can stomach to do unless it's his job and then he knows he has to do it and he does it um, many times not willingly but he does it. So uh, when you choose to do this the, the, uh, the obvious uh, answer is that you have to have a certain uh, dedication to it and you also have to have a rather nice dose of patience. So uh, my patience seems to be in abundance when I'm facing a problem such as doing these. Uh, I paint flowers in the open um, much more preferably than, uh, preferably than I do in the studio. Um, I much prefer to set my easel up outside in the garden or in an area where there are wildflowers growing and paint what I see with the natural daylight. Um, that's not possible here, so you do, you do what you can with what you have. Um, one of the more uh, one of the more uh, informational pieces of of, of um, comments that I have for you is to keep uh, the the colors absolutely pure, and you must do that by making sure that your brush is rinsed at all times, and that you never expect uh, the um, the colors that uh, blend with other colors to be anything else but muddy. So when I need a very very pale green, I make sure that the brush is absolutely clean in order to mix that pale green. The the, um, the need to uh, to be uh, uh, observant and have some affinity towards these things means that you um, that you can uh, understand the texture. Uh, now there are an awful lot of painters around that do flower paintings, and in my opinion, a good deal of the time they look as though they're made of cement. They don't look like they're fragile flowers that could fall apart in a high wind or that could uh, that could be crushed with just a with just a very slight gesture they look uh, they look uh, heavy and um uh, not flower-like. So what I try to keep in mind, what I try to point out when I'm doing this, is that the the fragile quality of, of flowers is also important in the interpretation of them. Uh, there is a um, there is a painter who has been doing iris for lo these many many years, and um, his posters are everywhere. And in my opinion, the iris look as though they are literally made of stone. They do not have the delicacy or the or the or the um, the fragile quality that, in my opinion, you have to have in order to interpret a flower properly. So, uh, once again, my opinions are, um, are are my own. They should not reflect the um, opinions of the station, uh, nor the opinions of the art world, because this man is an extremely successful flower painter. There, his posters and his um, and his prints are everywhere. But um, I believe that uh, I believe that um, that they are, in fact. Uh, posters of flowers made of stone. Anyway, here's the, uh, there's that, um, 
um, gypsophila, the, uh, otherwise known to all of us as baby's breath, which is uh, giving uh, uh, the spark that, um, that this little flower arrangement needs. I see also that uh, the uh, flower arranger, the florist, has um, uh, introduced here a wild flower, a semi-wild flower, and it's Heather. Over here, in a, in a little sort of a very, uh, very low-key way, is a, is a little sprig of Heather uh, with its little, um, well, the color of, it, of the stem is, um, is sort of, well, it's sort of brownish and pink. And his, the, the little stem comes in here and, and hides behind this carnation. And um, uh, Heather and, and uh, florists do love to use wildflowers in some of their in some of their arrangements, and 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 it's a very understandable because they have a, a wonderful little lure all their own. So this Heather over here uh, is um, very subtle, but it's it's there, and um, it's little it's little pointy uh, greens uh, mixed in with the little mauve Heather color. Is um, I'm making a point of it so that you can. It's kind of lost in the arrangement, and whatever you're seeing on the screen, maybe you don't see the little, the little Heather arrangement that I've got here, but I'm going to make it quite obvious to you what it is, so that you can, well, so that you can get in on my enthusiasm for it. And here are the little pink flowers at the end of these green, green areas, and I, and um, uh, it certainly doesn't help, doesn't hurt to, um, to, to have these details pointed out to you. As I said earlier, the people who like my flower paintings is because they are full of these. Uh, details. So there's the heather and um, over here is one of those uh, nice little profile uh, um, uh, studies of a flower of a little carnation in profile with its tubular uh, little trumpet shaped uh, container and it has a it has a color uh, arrangement here a different color in the middle of it very uh, typical of this particular flower and it's uh, and I and I can afford to spend some time doing this because it's vital to show these things in their in their proper light. That if I'm going to be a realist, I had better be a realist all the way. Uh, here is the little here's the little trumpet that holds this flower, and of course I made it a little bit too dark, but um, there. Now. Uh, with the brush clean, and as you can see, I use uh, I use a tremendous amount of, of, of um, paper toweling in order to keep the brushes to keep the brushes nicely rinsed. Here is this little uh, profile view of this carnation, and it uh, it uh, it's not like the other ones. It's in a profile, and I and I agree, and I think that you'll agree that it's great fun to see little fl flowers in profile uh, as opposed to all of these uh, front views of these daisies. The little the little um, the little. Uh, uh, look of these flowers um, in different uh, positions is uh, what is intriguing to me also. So um, I would love to be able to uh, to tell you more about the uh, about the flower business, but I've done enough of that. I must tell you that there was a program I did a program recently um, whereby we went to the uh, Bayard Cutting Arboretum, which is right down here on the South Shore near Oakdale, or in Oakdale, and. Um, there, this is the season. This is the season to go there. This is when you will find uh, the the uh, the lure of, of flowers and trees at its uppermost. If you don't go now, uh, you will run into summertime when everything is really very lush. But here is where you see the birth of all this stuff, and it's really quite a remarkable place. So if you do have a chance, go down to the Bayard Cutting Arboretum and see all these uh, things uh, just coming up. Uh, the season is is quite late. But uh, nevertheless, it's still the opportunity is there for you to see the, um, the uh, well, the luck that we have to have this kind of a thing going on right here in our own backyard. Uh, America is amazing. Uh, it has it has all kinds of stuff, and especially when there is uh, such an enormous amount of tragedy going on in the world that we are living in this remarkable, peaceful period, and are able to really live for a while uh, compared to what other people in other parts of the world are doing. It is absolutely appalling uh, that we have to stand by and watch this, uh, this, um, this uh, uh, really unacceptable behavior on the part of a lot of people uh, in the world. So uh, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm going off into another tangent, but I can't help uh, uh, remarking with all these beautiful things around how fortunate uh, everyone is here and that uh, there should be no complaints about anything. <laughs> okay, I've gotten a signal that we're going to have one more minute before the break here, and I'm, I'm working down on this, um, on this uh, elusive little piece of fern that is sticking out and catching the light and giving a nice, a nice feeling to this pyramidal shape. 
but as you uh, as you see, I'm um, I'm working my way towards the final conclusion of this, uh, and in uh, in a you know towards the end of this program, I will. Um, hold this up against or behind or next to the flower arrangement and see just how close uh, we came or I came to interpreting this properly. This is the um, this is the uh, the um that this wonderful purple stuff uh, called argyratum, uh, I believe, that dries very nicely, and it certainly gives a wonderful lift to this uh, to this um, really sort of pink study. But the argyratum is a really, really beautiful stuff, and no wonder the florists latch on to it because it gives a it gives such a rich, rich look about it. Anyway. Um, I, I suppose this is the time to take a very short break. I really need to uh, get some of this extra color out of my brushes, so don't go too far away. I'll be right back and um, continue until the final conclusion. So don't go too far. nice and clean the turpentine fell over and had to get some more so these are the hazards of the business and uh, of course it's not just me here in this studio there is a crew and so uh, I can tell you something when I spill the turpentine I'm not the only one that smells it anyway we are now going to conclude or I'm going to conclude if the crew can um, not pass out from the fumes here we can conclude this study of a floral arrangement um, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been a, an interesting uh, thing to talk about. I hope that uh, your interest was sustained uh, somewhat with the need to talk about how uh, because flower flower painting is um, is talked about uh, rarely on these programs. Uh, there is a far more glamorous thing to do, and that's to talk about uh, mountains and great peaks and glamorous. Uh, um, pine trees growing on imaginary hillsides and so on with uh, with um, uh, really sort of strange and crude reflections in the water but I like to be able to work from this kind of um, life arrangement life situation and to deal with the business of painting these uh, of painting flowers because uh, they are an, an, uh, a very um, appreciated um, uh, form of the arts. Um, as I was saying before, so many things in our lives are dictated by the presence of flowers. Everything from what we wear to what we eat on. Uh, the dishes in your kitchen more than likely have got flowers on them. So. Uh, this is my little this is my little contribution to the understanding of how we live and think about it uh, of all these uh, uh, things around us. Um, there is a um, there is a remarkable uh, institution called the Bronx Zoo uh, up in Upper New York uh, City here in the Bronx, and you must go and see uh, the botanical gardens as well. Uh, the zoo and the botanical gardens are the probably one of the great resources of the city. Uh, it's free. All you have to do is to pay your way to get there and um, you will find that there is a, um, 
there is a uh, wealth of knowledge in the uh, in these institutions which uh, probably every child ought to be introduced to uh, at one point or another very 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 carefully by uh, you know, uh, caring and um, and informed people about how you uh, how you understand all of this, uh, all of these uh, gifts that we have around us. Um, I have uh, I have been uh, talking about uh, taking the uh, population of the school children out of the classroom as often as possible and learn about these things uh, firsthand. It is frowned upon a lot by people because of the because of the problems of uh, of taking children on field trips, but field trips are absolutely vital, and even if it's something as simple as going to a botanical garden and viewing flowers in growth. Uh, it's interesting that when classes get taken to Washington, D.C., they go and see uh, the obvious things, which are very, very helpful and very essential, but it is rare that they are taken to the, um, the Washington, uh, the uh, national um, greenhouse down there just on the mall right outside of Washington right next to the Capitol that the uh, that the botanical gardens are not first on the list and I think that it would be a it would be a vital thing to do here is a uh, there here is the the blackness of the shadow which is sort of the anchoring thing for this whole painting um, it, it needs to have it needs to have a, uh, a uh, well, the word anchoring is the best that I can come up with, so that it is not floating in air, and it also gives a wonderful dramatic kind of a, of a color scheme to it if you surround some of these brilliantly lit flowers with, um, with the darkness of the, uh, of the black shadows against this dark background. So, uh, as, you, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm working rather quickly because time is, is, is running out, but I just want you to see how the, um, how the presence of this uh, very, very black shadow, and it's all for the form of these flowers taking, you know, casting their own shadows against the background that it is that is doing it in this this fern of obvious. But here is the here is the the need to uh, to once and for all finish this. There is a wonderful black shadow back here behind the fern, and it, uh, it the shape of the fern is is, is seen in the shadow, and um, the, the darkness is it gives a gives a nice strong quality to an otherwise rather delicate study. The, um, there's some black in here too, in, 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 in spots, and that should be that should be attended to. So, um, as I say, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a little bit of interpreting now. See if I see if I think that this flower arrangement is actually as interesting as it could be, or does it need something beyond what it has? Uh, does it need to have um, a, a something else introduced, which we don't have in the flower arrangement? And I found that maybe I would like to see something. Uh, similar to the to the use of the heather, which is a wildflower, I'm thinking that I would, if I had been uh, arranging these flowers, I probably would have put some some grasses in. And uh, so let me let me see if it works. If it doesn't work, I will take my lumps and admit that it was a poor idea, and then uh, then maybe uh, uh, um, uh, apologize for having made a goof. But, but by reducing the um, the paint to a very thin consistency with my with my archival oil and my um, and, the, and the paint thinner that I'm using, maybe I can uh, maybe I can put some grasses in here and see if it's going to give a more of a flow to this um, to this painting. Let me see if I can show you what I, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the introduction of a of a um, of some uh, of some uh, very fine very delicate. Uh, 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 grasses, uh, j just just for the inter just for the business of impro improvising on something which is perfectly acceptable, but is it helped with my with my um, with my wanting to put these in? I don't know if it helps. Uh, we'll se step back and look at it. But I have a feeling that it uh, it might help some. But this is all in the realm of being allowed to do this if you're the creator of a of a project. And um, so I'm going to, besides the little, the little baby's breath, I'd like to see whether or not my, or whether or not my grasses mean anything. And here's, here's the way I would interpret uh, some of those genuine grasses and uh, things with the little heads on the end. So we have here now the, um, the, the, uh, the floral arrangement with some, in, with an interpretation of the grasses, I'm going to anchor this a little bit more with a with a sharp uh, with a sharp line. The uh, the flower arrangement that I have, the, the vase that I have here is um, uh, covered up with a um, with a cloth. Therefore, I I uh, don't see the sharp um, the sharp shadow that I want to have underneath here. But here is here is the, generally the um, the way you would. Uh, 
you would approach this. Uh, this is uh, this perspective is all wrong. Let me get this correct here. It's it's got to be uh, it's got to be in this direction. Now, uh, maybe the uh, person who is painting who will be painting this would not see that that uh, that that perspective is wrong, but it is. Anyway, I've missed a few of the flowers. I can f uh, stick a couple of them in. There are some missing here. There's one missing over there. But I'm not sure that, the, yes, there's a big white one over here that has to be put in because if I hold this up against the uh, original arrangement, it had better be absolutely correct. And this, uh, this nice big daisy is down here, uh, sort of tucked into the, into the uh, shadows, but with a little bit of brilliance hitting some of those other petals. And it, uh, let me see, and some, there's some darkness of this daisy because it is in shadow. And um, then I have missed one of the uh, great Gerbera daisies that's in profile. So it looks like the timing is okay. I have not failed too much in trying to get this all done in one shot. I mean, in, in one hour's program, uh, it is uh, sometimes really sort of uh, crazy to think that I can pull this off in a very short period of time. However, with a few moments left, here is this uh, extra daisy that is going to be done in profile. And um, it's got some nice curved uh, petals here that are um, fortunately up against the dark background and they will show very, very clearly that this flower is turning. Well, anyway, um, these are obviously, these programs are taped, which uh, denies me the ability to talk to you as I do when I have a live show. However, um, we can talk at the end of every month on Tuesday. I will, um, I, I come back at the, uh, on the last Tuesday of every month and have a live program, which means that at that, at that time I shall be able to uh, converse with um, the audience. Uh, I hope that uh, all of this uh, that I have managed to jabber away at you about today was of interest to you and that you were able to get something out of it and by all means if you think that you can come anywhere near to doing a flower arrangement in in painting uh, bite the bullet uh, and uh, try it there is nothing no harm done you can always uh, you can always deny that you did the picture you can always say I didn't do that in any case um, thanks for watching I hope that um, I hope that you got something out of it. I certainly enjoyed doing it and talking to you about all these nifty things. Bye bye.